Hi folks, it's um, January 1st, 2009, and uh, the new year has begun. Funny enough, um, my business partner, who uh, right now is on uh, semi-active duty with the United States military, uh, left me a voicemail, um, and I didn't hear it because obviously I was reveling for the new year. Um, but the funny part was I picked up the phone, put it to my ear, and he said, well, happy new year, welcome to 2009, and the dark ages. I kind of chuckled. Um, so here we go. Some predictions. I don't do this uh, very often or at all because I always find that whatever I say may be used against me. Um, oh, you didn't do this right, whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to make some predictions. One of them is um, we're going to probably reach 12% unemployment by the end of this year. And that's government numbers, not shadow stats. I would check out shadowstats.com. They're saying right now we're at about 14, 15% unemployment. So by bringing it up to 12, we're bring, bringing us close to 20, which would be approximately the percentage of unemployment there was during 1933 to 37. Second prediction is that um, there'll be kind of a, I wouldn't call it a recovery. I think that would be a, um, a mental shift, a universal mental shift in the United States from people buying stuff because they need it or buy stuff because they want it or it's the new and hottest thing to buying something that they need. I know this is sort of happening now, but I think that um, it's going to be in mass. Um, also, I think that uh, I'm going to quote somebody else's prediction, which was my business partner's, um, and he said that the end of corporations as we know it, mega corporations as we know it, is over, and the return of the uh, mom and pop business, which I'm one of, I'm hoping it's true, will be the mainstay. People are not going to travel as much. People are going to spend more time with their more time with their families, and really get to know each other. One of the things I was talking with some friends of mine last night, uh, waiting for the new year to be rung in, was when I was a boy, and that wasn't long ago, 25, 30 years ago. Um, my, three generations lived in one home. Uh, I had my grandparents, my father, mother, and my sisters and myself, and we all lived together. Now, it wasn't all sugar and cream, as the old saying goes, but we spent a lot of time with each other. We spent summer vacation with each other. Nobody went west coast, east coast. We would go to the same place every summer. In our case, it was Long Island. Uh, many Jewish families um, would travel either up to the Poconos or to uh, Long Island to bungalows and that's what we used to do as kids well when I was a kid when they were adults but we spent a lot of time in the house you know living there making meals uh, you know it wasn't all pleasant and it wasn't all that great and there were a lot of times where I wished I had my own space and own time but we knew each other and we spent a lot of time with each other. And I think that's going to come back uh, out of necessity. Uh, I'm hoping out of love for everyone, but I think it's going to be out of necessity. And I think people are going to start to do the old things that we used to do in the 40s, you know, the people did in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s when uh, I was a boy, which is, you know, we all piled into one vehicle, one vehicle, we owned one vehicle, and ran it into the ground. Um, and drove an hour and a half, two hours away to the wilderness and um, and spent two weeks just, you know, playing frisbee and checkers and, you know, arguing politics. And I think that that's what's going to happen. I hope it is. I think that realization is going to really come about in the summertime because people are going to look and say, you know, this whole thing is a mess and... You know, my life is crap, and all we're doing is paying off our debt. And I'm, I'm hoping that, um, I think that people are going to actually sit down and go, all right, well, we can't go to Colorado, or we can't do that cruise, because 
we can't afford it. So any of you folks who have um, you know old houses and dilapidated farms in the Catskills, I would tr- I would probably suggest as a business model, you know, getting a couple of those out of work uh, carpenters and electricians and build those little bungalows. You know, they got you know with outhouses or with at least basic toilets. I'll tell you right now, people are going to be flocking for that. So I don't know about the Midwest or the Californias, you know, California and and the West Coast, but I'll say this for the East Coast. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people who have their jobs or even people who don't have their jobs are going to want to get away in the summertime. So that's something that I thought about as a possible business model. I guess this video, now I'm thinking about it, is to see the light at the end of this very dark tunnel. I know that I know that there's not going to be um, the kind of prosperity that we've had, but You know, after the realization hits, you got to do something. And I think as entrepreneurs, which I am one, this, my retail business is my third business in 20 years. Uh, And you, you know, eventually you realize that there's a problem. The problem is here. And now you need to work inside that problem. You have to, there will be vacations, even if the vacations to the Catskills or to Long Island, um, you know, even if it's a getting piling into your, you know, little SUV, and twelve of you go and spend two weeks, you know, just hanging out and enjoying the cool fresh air. This is an opportunity for folks like myself, and maybe like yourself, to create a niche. Now, you're not going to make a million dollars. No one is going to make a million dollars anymore. No, you know, I mean, the phrase, and nobody's going to be a multi-rich person. But you're going to make a living. And that's the way we need to look at this year and the next four to seven years. You're going to have to make a living. There's no denying it. You're going to have to eat. You're going to have to put clothes on your back. You're going to have to have a roof over your head. Now, you can wait for the government to take care of that. Or you can do something about it. And that's a decision you have to make. Personally... I'm going to do something about it. Now, right now, my business is doing okay. I had a fan. I had a phenomenal uh, New Year's Day. It was snowing out, and right now it's 20 degrees, and with the wind chill, it's like minus 10 or something, or minus four. It says on the radio. But you know, my business is making. I'm making a living, and that's what everybody needs to start focusing on. Not having the wonderful house and the two-car garage, and yada 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 yada, but make a living and what does that look like that changes your whole perspective you know now i now what do i focus on i'm not making millions and millions of dollars now i'm just making a living so that means i i'm okay now you can do something that you should be doing for us religious folks it's focusing on your family spending time with them get to know your spouse get to know your children let them get to know you you have an opportunity as a man and as a father to teach your children. You've learned a lot and you're going to learn a lot more. Take the opportunity to teach your children and talk to your spouse and get to know that person that you married and may have produced a number of kids with. Because that person is your helpmate. She or he is your best friend and will probably help you and probably be the difference between surviving and thriving. So that's my little blog entry for the first day of January 2009. I will probably do another video uh, in regard to Mr. Obama. Um, After my last video, I was kind of like, I wanted to say something, and I didn't want to do it on this one. So, good luck, God bless, and um, Happy New Year.